Leeds United versus Norwich was as much as he wanted to play it down, Daniel Farker's opportunity to really stamp his authority on an old club with incredible tactical knowledge, and he really took advantage of that. Leeds went into the half 2-0 down and ended up winning 3-2 with what was an incredible display of both individual skill and tactical nous. Watch to the end because I think it's really fascinating the way that Daniel Farker turned what could have been no points into three and why that will be absolutely huge for us getting promoted this season. First up, I want to talk about how Farker's subs changed the game, but where the first half flaws was, were, was, either way, um, you can't really make substitutions without knowing where the problems are in the first place, and I think they were quite clear to see for a lot of people, the first being weaknesses at right back. So we had Archie Gray, I'm going to pull this up here, there we go, uh, Archie Gray here playing at right back, which he's okay at doing, he was a little bit tired, but that's because he's played a hell of a lot of football recently, and typically we do things a little bit differently, typically it'll be Luke Ayling here, Archie Gray here, and Gray will drop in as a sort of inverted right back when Ayling bombs up the wings. This was a weird situation because that's not what Ampadu is used to doing, and it's not what Kamara is used to doing either. So we had Gray effectively isolated with Rodon having to pull outside from time to time to back him up. That's a really dangerous situation for us to be in as a side because it leaves this massive gap here. Stroke has to come across, Byron has to come across, and then there's a space here for the other winger, and it's ultimately just sort of problems. Not very good to have a weakness at right back, but it's something that we're looking to deal with. Shackleton returning from injury, Spent returning from injury, that'll be solved going forwards. It's not going to be a constant thing, I don't think. In addition to that, we had fairly slow and workable pressing that other sides were able to go against. So I'm going to flick to the other board here and look at the goalkeeper with the ball here. So, centre-back drop deep. Ruter presses on. And Kamara and Ampadu also press on, but they're outnumbered in the midfield. That's something important to know. This is all happening a little bit higher up the pitch. It's a little bit more congested that I'm showing than I'm showing here, but... I'm giving it a little bit space of space to breathe so you know what's happening. My tongue is tripping over itself today. And we would keep having the occasional issue of the goalkeeper would just stand with the ball in the middle of the box. Leeds fans would get a little bit aggy and ask Piru to press, which he'd do, and the ball would go to the number five. If Piru presses here, the ball just goes back, and they wait for a press again until someone drops out of midfield, play it forward, and then they're countering with similar numbers to what we have. There was a similar issue happening where Dan James wouldn't commit to pressing here because, of course, there's a fallback and then they've got a free run at Archie Gray, who, as I've mentioned, wasn't having the best of days. So pressing was a serious issue in the first half as well. In addition to that, we were having some good chances, but we weren't quite finishing them off. It was a quite big issue for us in that first half. We had Kamara have a decent pop on goal and not get it on target. Same for Piru. Somerville had a couple of opportunities that didn't go in. Dan James was the same. It wasn't a very good first half for us in the slightest, and it's understandable that we came in 2-0. We were creating a bit, but it wasn't turning into much. And those creations happened on the transition, which is important to note because I'm now getting into the substitutions and the differences that they made. So, looking at this side, you wouldn't expect these changes. Kamara, off, with Patrick Bamford coming on. Not one that you would expect. Sam Byram off, with Willy Nonto coming on. Again, a very, very weird change. It leaves a sort of mystery formation because you've got a lot of forwards on the pitch and you don't know what you're going to do with them. What we ended up doing with them was this. A sort of weird version of a 3-5-2. I'm just going to do that to make it look like it's clearer banks of the five. Um, but in reality, I think it's more of a bizarre... 3-3-1-3 three, three, three sort of thing where Piru plays with these two. Somerville in the middle here, James out here, Nonto out here. James did a bit of tracking back, but Nonto didn't quite do the same thing. Yeah, it's 3-5-2-ish. That's the simplest way of describing it. Piru was spending a lot of time in the midfield. If anything, it might be a bit 3-4-1-2. Hard to explain. Bizarre tactical change, but it worked. And it worked because it went through all of our problems and it managed to solve them. The first of them is with the pressing. We had, first up, better pressing from Bamford. Bamford is better at the press than Joel Pirro is. That is just known. That is something that Daniel Farker has specifically mentioned in the past because it's true. Bamford has a little bit more energy when he's pressing. 
I'm just going to slightly modify this. And you can also notice that there's a better pressing structure here. We've only got three on three at the back, but that's completely fine because it's seven on seven in their half. Ruter can press here because he doesn't have to worry about the wing back here because James can press on. Bamford can push up here. Nonto can push up here. If Bamford presses this, this ball happens, but you've still got pressure from other places that might leave a ball open and we might eventually get counterattacked by them, but that isn't a serious issue because we're sort of trusting the side. And I can't remember who mentioned it, but we were quite good in securing the result by going for what someone mentioned as park the bus in their half of the pitch. We had so much of the possession that they were unable to break out. And if they did break out, we've got a lot of pacey players on the pitch. We have Dan James who can rush back, Somerville, Nonto. They're all very, very fast footballers who can drop in and cover. Dan James did a lot of sprinting in this match. And I think his defensive work is massively underrated. The same as his attacking work. But in this match in particular, when he effectively played as a left-back, which he's not done to my memory before. But I think the 3-5-2 worked really well. Something else that I also noted was we were holding the ball effectively, and not only that, but we were using it intelligently as well. So there was a moment with a very, very packed, confined box. I'm just going to squeeze things in a little bit here. With Bamford and Rutter, and they were just playing nice little tippy-tappy bits. Pass the ball to Bamford, move a bit, receive, push up. And Bamford was unlucky to not score from one of those situations. Nice little deft bits of footwork that Bamford's always been good at. He's, I think, underrated for that because he moves a little bit funky compared to Rutter. But he's always been quite good with the ball at his feet. He's finishing, again, not quite there. But the fact that we're getting these opportunities in really tight, constricted areas when teams are putting a lot of men behind the ball, like bringing on Forshaw at two all is a sign that they did not want to win this match is a very, very good sign. And in addition to that, we benefited from a lot quicker transitions. So I'm just going to switch back to this board here. So let's assume that we are being attacked here. All of our players are dropping deep. We have this happening. Well, imagine it's a free kick that they are about to concede a goal from. So the sheer number of players that we have on the pitch that are able to just rush and make a difference. So Somerville, in this case, managed to score from the counter, but we've also got Dan James, who I think at the time had been sub for Jaden Anthony, but he also has incredible pace in him. Willie Nonto, very fast player. Rutter, when he gets up to speed, incredibly quick. Piro isn't that, but it's been mentioned that his job is to get into the box late on and finish chances. That's fine. He's allowed to be a few yards behind the pace. Bamford isn't the quickest, but... He's not especially slow either, and it doesn't matter because we've already got four players that are attacking incredibly quickly. This was a match that we needed to win because, as it's been mentioned before time and time again, in the championship, it's the draws that kill you. Whether you drop two points or three points rarely matters because the teams at the top of the table get so many that dropped points are dropped points. Daniel Parker specifically said that he really wanted this win and I'm going to get rid of the chart now. Um, and it's easy to see why, because the more points we get, the closer we're going to get to Ipswich and Leicester. We're now third in the league, and I think a lot of that comes down to how Daniel Farkas' subs changed the game when we played against... Why is it gone from my head? Who we played against yesterday? Norwich, yesterday. It's been a long day, okay? I know it's only one in the afternoon, but it's fine. Anyway... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like the video and subscribe. You can even become a channel member if you want to feel especially generous. And I will see you next time.